Hello, I'm Denisa Muraro. I'm a representative of the club EAE Club 35. And uh, today here at the ESC um, 2011 in Paris, I have the great privilege and honor to be talking with uh, Professor Catherine Otto, uh, a cardiologist and an expert uh, in echocardiography from the University of Washington. Um, thank you very much, Professor Otto, and welcome in Paris. Um, and thank you for accepting this, uh, to give us this uh, interview to share with us uh, some uh, glimpse on uh, your very fascinating career. Uh, you are um, interested in uh, your uh, expertise, uh, your achievements in the field of echocardiography are very well known. Um, I was wondering uh, if you could tell us uh, how have you developed this, uh, this incredible passion for echocardiography and uh, in particular for aortic valve diseases? Well, like most people in research, I developed a lot of my interest from a patient I saw as an intern who had aortic stenosis. And at that time, you could only make the diagnosis with catheterization. But 2D echo became available right when I was an intern. And I remember going to the echo lab one day, and they were doing a long axis view. And I just looked at it, and I said, those are the aortic, that's the valve. I can see the valve. And that was such an incredible experience that I began to think about my patient with valve disease, and could I have diagnosed it better, and then from there, kind of how could I have prevented it, and how could I treat a patient like that? So it really from a patient experience. Sometimes learning uh, the very steps in performing echocardiography might be very fascinating for young uh, doctors. However, the first steps are not uh, quite easy sometimes. I was wondering, uh, had, uh, did you face uh, some challenges, some difficulties in your early period of training? Could you share with us some experiences that you have at first? Yeah, I think uh, it's, you know, these days there's a lot of materials and resources available for learning echocardiography, which is a great advantage. And when I was a, a trainee, there was Feigenbaum's echocardiography book, which I read, you know, in detail from cover to cover. But there was very little about Doppler because Doppler was new. So I really had to learn a lot of that on my own. I had to go to the engineering library. I had to go to physicists. I had to really kind of uh, learn a lot of the Doppler myself. And so that was a real challenge. And I think that the, the lesson is, is that whatever your challenges are, just find the information, talk to the people, and, and kind of forge ahead, even if you don't know. Uh, undoubtedly, you, you represent a role model for uh, the young generations. Uh, could you tell us, uh, in your opinion, which would be the main prerequisites uh, for having a successful career in echocardiography and more generally in cardiology? Is there any advice that you can give us as for the young? Yeah, I think it's the same advice of everybody for everything. Do what you like to do and you know, give it your all, do your best. I think that people should do the part of cardiology that they're most passionate about, whether it be patient care, research, imaging, interventional. I think there's you know, a role for all of us. It's a team. And I think if you follow your passion and do your very best, I think we all will be successful as a group. Is this the main message that you try to convey to your young fellows, your uh people around uh, whom you work with in your lab? Yeah, I always tell the fellows they should do what they're most passionate about when they get up in the morning, what they want to go do. If it's patient care, they should do that. If it's research, they should go to the research lab and do research. Just try to think about what motivates them, what their goals are in life, and not really try to do what other people want, but do what they're most interested in themselves. Very interesting. How do you see the future of uh, echocardiography now in the cardiac imaging arena? Do you think that uh, the 3D echo will take uh, the lead over the 2D or they will uh, both exist or what is your opinion about it? I think echo is kind of going in two directions at the same time. One is the kind of advanced high-tech imaging and 3D echo will probably become what we do when it becomes like CT and MRI where we can acquire data in a 3D data set and look at it tomographically afterwards in a lot of detail. And we're not quite there yet, but it is gradually moving. On the other end, though, I think echo is moving into the realm of every physician learning echo and the bedside point of care and how the cardiologist interacts with the person doing point of care ultrasound, I think is going to be an important transition. I think we should help ensure that our primary care colleagues do things correctly and understand their scope of practice and then use the high-end echocardiography for the patients who really need those procedures. Do you apply 3D echo in everyday practice or there are some uh, 
subsets of patients in which you think that uh, it may have some uh, application nowadays or maybe in the future more? We tend to use it more in specific patients in our laboratory because it is a little time consuming. The, the, our echoes are done by sonographers in the United States and they're more comfortable doing a standard 2D exam. And then we tend to use the 3D more on the transesophageal echoes, primarily for mitral valve disease, atrial septal defects, some of the congenital patients. So we're really using it selectively at this point. Do you have any other passions besides echocardiography that you want to share with us? Um, you know, I think that really summarizes it. I thought man, echo is a great field. I mean, it's, you never get bored. It's uh, interesting to do every day. We're always learning new things. So I think it's a wonderful field to be in. Thank you very much, Professor Otto, for this very inspiring, very nice interview. And on behalf of the young uh, doctors and echocardiographers, I, I would like also to thank you for your great contribution uh, to our education. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me.